Just restart. Five, four, three, two, one. We have main one, engine start. Zero. Let's lift off. Two, three, four, five. And we're seeing normal reactions. All personnel like switch to channel four for security. Imagine this, that Pope, Giordano Bruno, and Freud are sitting comfortably in heaven watching television. Suddenly, the news come on. A planet has been detected beyond our solar system. What would they say? Giordano Bruno was an Italian monk and scholar of the Renaissance. At that time in Italy, the church dictated laws and censured knowledge based on religious grounds. A maverick, Bruno embraced the most advanced and forbidden thinking of his time. But the Earth went around the sun. He then wrote that stars were neither hanging ornaments nor windows into heaven, as commonly believed, but faraway suns, similar to ours, that planets like ours went around these suns, with intelligent beings like us inhabiting them. But what really ticked the religious establishment, 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 was this. Shouldn't Jesus, as Bruno, have also lived, died, and been reborn on these distant worlds to save their inhabitant soul? Shouldn't God and his prophets be as infinite as the universe instead of limited to one people on one world? For these questions, Giordano Bruno, in 1600 AD, was burnt at the stake with his tongue tied in a gag. A literal reading of the Bible pins the Earth immobile like a stone statue in space. The sun, the planets, and even comets were all going around our planet. Earth was the center of the universe, and anyone who said otherwise was a heretic. It took 400 years for the Vatican to bend to the mountain of evidences, from Mars's bizarre to and fro in the sky, to the changing position of stars as seen from Earth, let alone time zones and space travel. So, on October 31, 1992, the Vatican officially announced that the Earth indeed moves, in fact, orbits the Sun. Case finally closed. Not really. With the detection of distant planetary systems, the possibility of intelligent extraterrestrial life is growing more real, and the questions raised by Giordano Bruno more significant and momentous than ever. Could an intelligent alien life form, radically different from man, also be in the image of God? What if their concept of God was our concept of the devil? Questions about the human condition is what good science fiction is all about. Racism, faith, gender roles, to cite but a few, are explored in exotic extraterrestrial settings. In Star Trek, Vulcans are a species that act on logic alone, while Klingons are driven by instinct. They represent extremes of our egos. In Star Wars, beings from different planets find they can hold the same belief and belong to the same sect. The message is clear. Intelligent alien life forms, if any, may not believe in Christ, Moses, or Prophet Muhammad, and yet, they may not be inferior to us. Humanity must lose its status as a superior creation, and in return, gain a level of cultural maturity anthropologists could only dream of. Just a minute. Why should the aliens be intelligent? That's right. You make them so powerful. Ever wonder why? 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 It's all in your minds. Think about it. Who is all powerful? God? Nine. Scientists? Of course, Nine. Your parents. The search for intelligent extraterrestrials is in reality the search for an authority figure. So, that's why we search for extraterrestrials? Nine, Nine. That's why you search for intelligent extraterrestrials. The search for planets and plain alien life is a different matter. Fear. 
of God, of being alone, existentialism, didn't you read Sartre? One minute to auto-destruct. One minute to auto-destruct. <laughs>